Hi, it's Derek Watson here from First Impressions Dental Practice in Ramsgate in uh, East Kent in the UK. Uh, I want to talk to you today about um, pa uh, dentists running late and, and patients turning up late perhaps to a certain extent. What's the dynamics of it? How does it all work? Well, let's start with the dentist for the first part. Um, the patients hate it when the dentist runs late. I hate it when someone runs late. If I go to the doctor and I always say, is he running late? How late is he running? The receptionists hate this. They don't like this question. They'd rather everybody just sat down and shut up and waited. But I think waiting is, is a discourtesy. Under some circumstances, it's not. If you have an emergency, then uh, you can reasonably expect your patients to either reschedule or wait. Um, but you have to explain to them why, you know, what, what the situation is. In my surgery, we almost never run late. In fact, uh, many times we run early and if the patient's early and we're early, then we'll get them in early. Um, you will find in some surgeries they will run routinely late and, and anything up to 45 minutes. And I think that's due to a number of factors. First of all, um, you know, they know that patients won't really complain until they've been waiting over half an hour. Um, once you've been waiting an hour, you really are going to start complaining. So 45 minutes seems to be some sort of sweet spot in terms of keeping people. Um, secondly, there's the um, uh, what I call the buffer effect, which is that um, a dental surgery and to a certain extent, a dental lab is the time is money. And so they want to keep the place busy all the time. And so it's nice to have a queue of people waiting to go in because you know that's the most efficient way to use the surgery time. Um, it's not most efficient for the patients, it's most efficient for the practice. And, um, and while it might be a good idea for you to do it, it does annoy people. Now, the alternative is to um, try and run on time, but then to run on time, you have to allow um, more time than you need for every patient. And uh, you, you take the, um, the risk that at the end of the appointment, you're gonna be sitting around for 10 minutes or so waiting for the next patient to come in, just so that you can see them on time. Now, in a private practice, that's not so much of a problem because in a private practice, as we discussed, you set your own fees. So you can build in an element of um, uh, expense into the fees to cover the cost of uh, the time spent waiting for the patient to arrive. Um, on the National Health Service, you're working down to a fee scale that's set for you. And so you don't really have a chance to say, well, I'd like to have 5% of my income um, devoted to um, not, you know, just waiting for patients not working. There are other jobs to do um, before a patient arrives. Um, for example, uh, it's not much use if a patient turns up, sits in the chair and you say, hello, who are you? What have I done for you in the past? Uh, and uh, what, uh, you know, is there anything on the agenda for this visit? The patient's not gonna be impressed with that. So they are gonna want you to sit down and say, hello, hello, uh, John, uh, how's that tooth we took out six months ago? Did it heal up all right? And are you ready for me to have a look and you know and see if you're suitable for an implant as we discussed? Um, they expect that and so in order to get that sort of service they have to you have to read the notes before they come in So although a patient may be booked in at 11 o'clock um, that you may have been in effect seeing them for the last 10 or 15 minutes by Because you've been sitting in the office going through the notes and their x-rays and then of course after the patient um, after the patient uh, goes, you've got notes to write up. They're going to expect you to uh, record everything um, correctly so that you know that no mistakes are made, uh, referrals are written, and uh, X-rays are filed, reports are made, etc., etc., etc. So, and that can take quite a long time, especially with a new patient if they've got a complicated treatment plan. So um, the problem is some dentists are also not very good at uh, finishing up. So, for example, they might be doing sort of three or four fillings and uh, they might find look at the clock and see they've only got like 15 minutes to go and what they should do is they should say look um i'm halfway through doing four fillings but we're going to run out of time um, i'm going to put four temporary fillings in and we'll finish them off next time you come and that's because the patient you know generally will go what you know what i don't i don't want to come back i don't want to come back and get them fillings uh, done later so there's a lot of pressure on dentists to um try and justify um not 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 finishing the work if they can't finish the work um, obviously if it's because you're running late and you're trying to catch up and the patient's getting short change then you can understand their um their annoyance if it's because things have taken longer than expected or been more complicated or the treatment plans changed halfway then just say to the patient i'm sorry as you know you know we thought this was going to be filling it's ended up being a root treatment i can't do the whole root treatment today i'm going to have to do the first half and do it next time so um, that's how dentists can run on time and why they should run on time and they should run on time. 
And in my next talk, I'm going to talk a bit about what happens when the patients turn up late.